my friend, I'm Nori Sturdick, your friendly neighborhood weatherman and host of Up Next on Access Hamilton. It is so good to see you. A lot has happened in the past month and we don't want to skip a beat, so let's cut the chit chat and get right down to brass tacks. On April 30th, the Hamilton Police Department organized the Shawnee Shoe Hands 5K and One Mile Hero Walk for Autism. Sergeant Sean Grasso spearheaded the event and participated with his son, Shawnee. So many came out to support this great event for a great cause. Proceeds were donated to the Art Gloucester Camp Sun and Fun for children and adults with autism and cognitive disabilities. An incredible cause. Thank you so much for taking charge, Sergeant Grasso. If you're a fan of cars, I hope you had the chance to visit Main Street last week. A classic, fun, free family event cruised downtown on Friday, May 20th for its 28th year. Cruising Main Street is a nod to the days when cruising downtown was the thing to do. Classic car enthusiasts show off their rides to event goers while the DJ plays the oldies and the hula hooping happens and the bubble blowing contest commence. This year's winner of the bubble blowing contest was none other than Chamber of Commerce President Ben Ott. Congratulations, Ben. We hope everyone had a great time and shout out to the great work done by the Main Street Hamilton Cruising Main Street Committee chaired by Angela Donio who brings this event to downtown every single year. This year, the Kiwanis Club of Hamilton celebrates its 100th year of service to Hamilton. The first meeting of the Hamilton Kiwanis Club was held on March 28th, 1922. I met with Mike Pasquarella, the vice president of the club, to talk about the club's mission, its anniversary celebration, and what the club plans for the future. It's a club that we started in uh, March of 1922. It actually started right behind us where the site of the uh, the post office is. There used to be um, a residence called the Jackson House. So uh, this year, 100th anniversary, uh, we're having a big gala at Tomasella Winery, uh, Tuesday the 24th. Um, it's an organization uh, basically based around the service of children. Okay, uh, Kiwanis is an international um, organization. Uh, we base a lot of our, our projects and our outreach to, to help the children and the community. Um, so it's, uh, it's something that is very rewarding. Uh, we have a lot of members, uh, about 40 to 50 current members that are, uh, that are part of the club. And, um, you know, we just like helping out. My personal favorite part is the camaraderie, you know, between the different members of the club. Uh, getting to see the look on children's faces is absolutely priceless. Um, we have a, uh, a Santa Christmas party um, that we, uh, we, we give gifts to, you know, kids in need in the community. And just seeing their faces when they get those gifts and know that we, we change their perspective of what the holiday means and we just bring that joy to them. That's probably the most rewarding factor of everything. So one of the main things that uh, the club has been doing for about 50 years now is the ha uh, Halloween parade. Everybody knows right right behind us down, down Bellevue, uh, we've been sponsoring that parade and every year it's just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, I think a lot of kids in the community really look forward to that. Um, we also do uh, the red, white, and blue pancake breakfast. That's coming up soon, the, uh, the end of June. Um, this year is going to be bigger and better. We're going to be able to produce twice the amount of pancakes. We're going to have griddles going, um, sausage, uh, blueberry pancakes, orange juice, coffee. Uh, so we, we, we enjoy doing that. Um, recently, we've done the, the Easter extravaganza that they've had, um, which is, again, right local here. Um, so, uh, and also coming up, we hold an annual raffle that'll be at our gala, the 100th anniversary, where it's a 50-50 uh, um, first ball out of the, uh, out of the, uh, the tumbler, takes a $10,000 prize. So uh, it is a big fundraiser for us. So we, we, we try to keep active and keep those things going on throughout the year. Um, biggest impact of Hamilton, I, I think not only is, is the outreach to the community and to the children, but also we, we're we're very active in bringing other clubs together. You know, clubs as far as Rotary, um, uh, Allies and Caring is a new business, uh, a new organization that's in town that that uh, that caters to the uh, you know to the Latino population. Um, we have a good connection with them too. So that that that's been recent that we've really been connecting with other clubs and 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 expanding our outreach. I think we're still young. Um, we do have some members that are in the organization. One member specifically, Jack Vansel, has been a member for 52 years. So he's been, he's been around uh, since 1970, he's been a member. Um, I think he's going to be honored um, uh, on the 24th at our gala that we have, the 100th anniversary. Um, Bob Schenk, Joe Contenicio, they've been their third generation um, uh, members of the club, been around forever, do a tremendous amount for the club. 
Um, so uh, I, I would say the club's getting older, you know, but uh, they're retaining membership and getting a lot of younger membership too. That's what we try to strive for is bringing the younger uh, population into it uh, to get them active. You know, we really do need more organizations like the Kiwanis Club, always appreciative of everything you do for our community. The Atlantic County Teen Arts Festival was finally back in downtown Hamilton after a two-year hiatus, and the teens were thrilled. Executive producer Denise Mazio talked with the Hamilton High School students to hear exactly what they were most excited about. Um, I'm mostly excited to see all the people. It's really fun to see like all different types of like arts and people coming together. I'm really happy the arts are back, and I'm really happy uh, Teen Arts is back in Hamilton. Um, I love walking the streets and looking at all the different arts from around Atlanta County, and I'm really excited to listen to our choir sing in the church. It's really fun. I like it a lot. Um, I'm really most excited about seeing most of the different uh, bands and choruses and everyone coming in to perform. I was actually getting ready to go head down there myself and just like go through some of the different, uh, you know, the high schools, the middle schools, all the different jazz ensembles and everything. I just, I'm excited to hear all of them perform. I think it means a lot. I think this town doesn't focus a lot on arts all the time. So to have like a festival like this here in town, like five minutes away from my house, is really crazy. The festival is sponsored by the Atlanta County government in collaboration with the Stockton University, the Noise Museum, and Main Street Hamilton, as well as many other organizations within the Hamilton Arts District. Students from all over Atlanta County took part in performances and workshops and enjoyed the day exploring all that Hamilton has to offer. We sat in on one Hamilton High School Select Choir's performance, as well as Cole Herman's piano solo. Congratulations, Cole! As we turn the page on our calendar of June, we start to focus on all things Blueberry. The annual Red, White, and Blueberry Festival is right around the corner. So much blood, sweat, and tears goes into making the event a success each and every year. I caught up with John Runfalo to tell us a little more about it. Well, I've been doing it ever since its inception in 1987. It started as an homage to the July 4th holiday and also the sesquicentennial of the county. They said to the chambers, why don't you do something in honor of July 4th, since it's the sesquicentennial of the county, blah, 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 blah. So my ad agency concepts, we decided we jockeyed around a few terms, and we said, uh, well, we're the blueberry capital of the world. Let's make it the Red, White, and Blueberry Fest. It started on Vine Street. I think uh, it was maybe 10 crafters and two or three food vendors, and we sold blueberries, and uh, that was it. Then it started to grow. We got a little bit bigger. We moved over to the middle school, like that field hockey field. And then it was a problem because Fairview Avenue was a uh, county road, I believe. And trying to shut that down was difficult. So we wound up here, oh, I guess about 20 years ago, maybe more. And it's been great because of the uh, expanse of the fields and we can utilize just about everything. And it's been a, a great marriage, the Board of Education and the town and us. And, uh, it's it just skyrocketed. When asked what seems to be people's favorite part of the festival, John told us this. And you know, people are genuine. They say we really enjoy it. it's a family day, and you know, the kids enjoy it. Grandma enjoys it. And mom and dad enjoy it. Uh, you know, the music, the cars, the crafters, the food. Of course, the food is always a specialty. But when I do my very very unscientific survey by giving a little card there and say. Uh, write down what your favorite part is and we'll bring, you can win a free t-shirt. It's always, what's your favorite part? The blueberries. I mean, they're, they're the king. It's, there's no doubt about it. Three and a half decades strong, the festival attracts visitors from all over the place. Again, it's a great mix and I, I don't know how to say it except for the fact that it's caught on and the people enjoy it. They, they bring the whole family. They, some people even have, you know, Relatives come in and, and you know enjoy the day. Uh, you know it's a good day to barbecue or just come here and eat. It doesn't make any difference. So, what kind of stuff goes on at the festival aside from eating blueberries? You know, bring the family, enjoy the day. Uh, music, uh, you know, from Sailing Savannah, Nikki G. We got the Cruising Classics Car Show, Crafters, food, and the king of them all, of course, blueberries. We got blueberry canolas. We sold a thousand of them in 2019, uh, and Moninos does that for us, and we have. Again, a lot of the civic groups are involved, and uh, that always brings everybody together, too. Uh, so, again, we're just we're uh, prepping for a big time. And, uh, again, Mother Nature, uh, again, hopefully cooperates. Thanks, John. Looking forward to seeing all the hard work come to life. 
not only is June Blueberry Month here in Hamilton, but it's also Pride Month. It's a month meant to bring awareness to the issues of the LGBT community. Cathedral's Executive Director Max Rodeo is taking a stand and trying to bring education and awareness to the community by creating the Hamilton Pride. I sat down with Max to learn more. Um, you know, growing up here, even for I myself, you know, I, I had a really wonderful childhood here, but there was still that missing link of, you know, somewhere to go to when you are, you know, questioning yourself or, you know, just going through life in general as a kid, especially nowadays is hard. Um, so having that safe space available, you know, whether it be, you know, online and in person is super duper important for, you know, a child or even young adults well-being. So Hamilton Pride is on Facebook and Instagram, just at Hamilton Pride. And we also have just built our website, which is www.hamiltonpride.com, just so that people can click and go where they need to go. Well, I told you there was a lot of stuff going on. I hope you enjoyed. We appreciate you sticking around and hope you'll tune in to see what's up next on Access Hamilton next month.